But yeah, so you're super hungry, you have to eat, yep, and uh, depending on, do you have a Sunday shift? Let's say, yeah. Okay. Yeah, then you, you it's really weird because you, you've you slept a long, long time, you're really hungry, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm... you don't feel rested at all. I, I just feel really groggy, like you do after you snap too yeah, long or something. Like, like gross. And, do some coke. I'm gonna go to like the diner and have a coffee. Ooh, and, like, stare. Oh, that's awesome. Into the distance. <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> just stare, dude. That's yeah. you, you're 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 such a freak. That's my best time. Dude, I can't, I can't. Do you do you have any magic points? I can't um, do magic is uh, uh, you should have some. Yeah, magic is not gonna be zero. It's equal to your pal, right? Is it pal times it's five? Weeks. Oh. Oh. No, magic no, it's just equal to power. Oh, yeah. I have eleven. Magic. Okay. Uh, roll five times. Roll under five times. Ooh. Five times magic. Damn good. Yeah. Okay. Magic. Five. Making a large spell. Uh, Fifty-two beats fifty-five. Yes. Oh. oh, excellent. Yeah, you're having your coffee. Thelma, the diner lady, is there. She pours you a coffee. You're just staring off into space. You look across the street. There's a bag lady sitting on the bus stop. Mm, certainly. I yep, mean, it's the same bag lady. There's yeah. bag ladies all over the city. <laughs> there are bag ladies all yeah. over the city. And, and I and I, I was <laughs> keeping my eye out because it was really suspicious that she just was not there. Exactly. Did, not has she noticed me? Again. You can't tell. She's a bag lady. She's also across the street. Are you gonna it's go like full eleven tail? at night, and she's like under like the, one of those like weird halogen lamps. Nice. That, like, Dude, you gotta go full tail. Like, yeah. You'd be like, "Hey, you following me? <laughs> hey!" <laughs> this ain't open fire. Yeah, yeah you long face. Through the diner window. <laughs> this ain't New York pizza. <laughs> oh God, no, no, no! Stop it. I'm not here for your pizza. I'm gonna shut you up. I know. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just something really brawn. I I'm not gonna lose her. Is she at a bus stop? She's just sitting in the bus kiosk. Yes. There's a little seat there. She's By the time you get there. out there, the bus will come and go, and, and the bus will drive past, and then she'll be gone. I'm gonna go over there and sit next to her with my. Oh, what? <laughs> Do you ever let her leave your sight? No. All right. So <laughs> so you you like leave some money. <laughs> you grab your coffee. <laughs> You can take your coffee with you. <laughs> you hold it and go. Just sit down. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna go sit like like I like I have no agenda. Like I'm okay. just a guy go, going to the bus stop. Like not, All right, not looking it, at her. Yeah. Oh, so there's either. barely room because bag ladies are much wider. Than well, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll stand at the bus kit. Like, oh, okay. There's not those benches are so tiny. Yeah. Two there people is can't room. sit there, on them. You could. There's like just enough butt space. No, I'm, I'm not <laughs> touching <laughs> a little bit. I'm not going to. All right. Also an assault of the senses. Sure. Uh, well, actually, that's the first thing. It reeks. She smells terrible. Like you're sure it's worse than when it was in the hospital. Wow. Ask her if she's a witch. <laughs> no, Get out. I'm not gonna Get ask out. her if she's a witch. <laughs> ask her if she's okay. You've seen her before. Roll idea. Idea. Alright. And this is under, right? Yes. Oh, oh na- na- 98 does not beat. Nope. Yeah, well, pull out a knife, pretty bad. stick yeah, it you, under her you, throat, you are... and start asking questions. No, it's, it's see, super uncomfortable okay? because it's like. She, she's just sitting there. She's just like a regular bag lady, and she smells terrible. And you're just standing here, and like you just can't get past the thing that it just keeps smelling worse and worse. It's like you know how if you're in a room that smells bad, and after a while you forget how bad it smells because you get open door <laughs> fatigue. Like you're there for like five minutes, and it just seems like it's just worse. Like you're feeling nauseous. Has anything changed about her? No, she's just sitting there, like she's just waiting for the bus. She doesn't turn her head. She doesn't pay attention to you. Gonna... Every once in a while, you hear one of those like little gurgling noises that people make when they can oh. sing down for too long. I'm gonna check the bus schedule on my phone. Oh, huh. yeah, you got another fifteen minutes before the bus comes. Oh my god, it's our service every half an hour. You got fifteen more minutes of this before she gets on the bus. Do you know what route this bus takes? Yeah, that's also part of uh, you can the, use the map. map. Yeah, yeah, that it comes up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going north, and you, it would take you to Wrigley Field and you know, to Belltown. Or not Belltown. Um, <laughs> um, Boys Town. I'll wait. 
This this scene from the cinematic perspective is really good though, because it's basically just him sitting down this is, and no, just I'm, I'm nothing stand, happening. I'm just standing or there. standing. Yeah, like this is Twin Peaks. Something. That's fifteen. Sorry. This is Twin Peaks. I'm That's close. horrified. So that was, there was so the bus shows up. Uh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hit the road because in Chicago, sometimes in certain places, the bus is not It's a bad way we're not picking you up. Yeah. Uh, but because you were there, you increased the odds. So the bus stops and sure, thank you. the door opens. And the, does the bus driver look like just a regular dude? Yeah. It's just a regular bus. There's like three people in the bus. <laughs> She's not <laughs> getting on that bus. I wait. Does she, she make a move? Like, does she make a move? She doesn't seem to be getting oh up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you gonna do, Nick? The bus driver is like, in or out. I get on the bus. All right. <laughs> yeah. Did, how do you get on the bus? Do you like you back into it, or do you just get on? <laughs> you take your cup of coffee and you walk backwards you didn't up take your the stairs. Right? No, I just right. get on the bus. All right. <laughs> So you, you scan your card, uh-huh. and the doors close behind you, uh-huh. and you go take your seat, uh-huh. and she's not there. <laughs> okay, now that's different. <laughs> that is what? not what I... Ask the bus driver if... Hey, did you, did you see that lady up there? Or back there at that stop? Who? There was, was a lady you. sitting next to me. It was just you, man. I know what you're on. <laughs> Don't talk to the driver while the bus is in motion. <laughs> I'm sorry. We all can't handle it. <laughs> Make a sound check. <laughs> Whoa! A little too much of that cocaine. I do cocaine. 77. Oh, Another no. Hi. All right. Oh, so so that, would, that would be a failure. Yeah. Sanity failure. <laughs> Holy shit. You lose one sanity point. Oh. Okay. I do cocaine. <laughs> I'm a Sleep and My cocaine, God. not not there is not not a good combination. But the smell, it was an it was a sensory hallucination too. Yeah. yeah. Intense because you didn't stop having it. Like that whole time you were there, you just kept smelling more mm-hmm. and more of it. <laughs> Maybe mm-hmm. so the if you of... smell yourself now, do you, have you picked up some of the reek? Oh, as soon as he got on the bus, like the smell was just gone. There's still smell, but it's just Chicago bus smell, not like uh, mm. yeah, okay. which is very similar, but much less intense. There's a presence in this city. There's something here. It's color spray. The color Shh. spray. There are a bunch of little ponies. There's, that are rainbow there's, there's color spray the in the water supply. The baggies are right. color spray. So do you <laughs> stay on the bus like, all the way to the end? Like, how long do you stay on the bus? <laughs> no, I'm just going to stay on the bus like for a couple stops and then go home. Okay. Because I'm like, the driver I guess pretty I much need a lot more sleep. You off, kind of oh my you. god. You get a little um, sense I'm, that I'm some of like, the other riders are like, I'm like going over and over again the the hospital room or the the waiting room. I'm like, did anyone else see her there? Like, it seemed like they were affected by the smell, or what, did, was I just oh, imagining I that? My spot hidden room. Yeah, you 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 think she back on that, and it's like one of those weird like uh, uh, Kaiser Soze moments where you're trying to remember if. The things made sense based on the story. It's like, it's like, like she was taking up a yeah, seat. It's just like six sense where I'm just imagining everything and putting it together, and you can't place it. Like you swear you saw people avoiding that space. You swear that there were seats yeah. open where people weren't sitting near her. But then you're thinking, oh, it was really crowded, and I remember people sitting down near her, but it looked like they were just averse to being near her. And the more you try to pinpoint it, the more fuzzy your memory of it gets. You always saw what you wanted to see. And the more fuzzy it gets, the more I obsess over it. Yes, and and and, and but you do feel a little familiarity with the sense because based on your military background, your cop background, you do remember feeling these things before, like when you were overworked or you were tired. There were times like this when you were out on patrol for twenty four hour stints and things like that. And you had yep. these moments, and you're like, yeah, you know what? Sleep deprivation and cocaine are not always the best combo. You know, maybe there's a thought. Of, that maybe a, a cleanse or maybe a spa day might be good for you. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll take like a a week off uh, going out at night or something. Yeah, but but basically disappearing bag ladies is is clearly like on the highest point of like weird experiences you've had. Yeah, I'm like, am I still sleeping right now? Like, 
Oh my gosh, really like that great As soon as you think this, you wake up. Yeah. Like, <sighs> oh, no, God. that's that's too much of a uh, <laughs> giveaway trope. I'm like, I'm awake, right? So do you go home and go back to sleep? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> Nightmare. Nightmare. Wait, is that... No, you're good. No. <laughs> All right, so you work through the day, and you work through the day, and everything's fine. How did you spend your Saturday? So did we establish that I was actually working on that Saturday? You you came to work, but it seemed like you came to work just to see if you could catch Miles there, and you did. You don't have to stay at work. The, the whole thing is that because you're on salary and you're a high enough position, you're left to your own devices. So you came to work mostly to catch Miles, and Miles seemed to not care about sharing very much with you. I mean, so, you, would, you would probably have some, like organizing stuff to do there's always stuff to do there's like always real work that you can be doing but it's also fairly routine like basically you could take a week off and people wouldn't really know this because your work is one of those ongoing type of things where it's a huge project there's a gigantic library with a huge amount of work well you know what i i'm new to the city relatively i feel like if i have some free time i would maybe want to like sightsee oh there's tons of awesome things there. yeah chicago has more museums in the city I than any city in the world uh you really? they recently expanded the art institute of chicago to include the art institute of chicago modern wing oh my god and they opened a new chicago modern art institute that's north of the actual art institute that's like right in my wheelhouse of things i would want to do Basically, I like from like a storytelling standpoint, I'm not investigating anything, but yeah, that seems like, yeah, if I'm going to spend my time sightseeing, I would want to go to that. Yeah. You can buy a membership if you like. Uh, it comes with every Tuesday docent walks that basically go through the collections Ooh. piece by piece. Yeah. I can tell you that I went on every single one for almost 20 years and never saw even a fraction of the collection. Wow. It's massive. I mean, that's a selling point right there. I would it, definitely buy that yeah yeah i mean that's what i'm up to do you have a particular interest in what type of art you like do you like like marble statues of naked people do you like black squares that supposedly are great art but actually just black squares i've always been fascinated in like so about that. in like <laughs> like gothic <laughs> oh okay like the gothic medieval sort of art, art deco sort of oh okay i don't know i don't know that sort of Whatever time range that is, what is that? Two hundred years ago. So like drawings of hell and uh, stuff. Or... I mean, yeah. <laughs> like those really, like those really like dark, colorful pictures yeah. of like Satan like coming up and uh, Michael slaying the yeah. dragon. Those um, have been. I mean, those are pretty epic. So. Yeah. Okay. So. That's pretty easy. That's actually one of the first galleries. Like when when you first enter the museum, there's like on the right is the, the Hall of Asian Art that has like all these tapestries. Mm -hmm. And on the left is this very famous place where you can see, oh, look, it turns out there really is such a thing as a glaive, a guizar, a glaive guizar, and a guizar glaive. It's like they're all lined up. Um, I'm looking at all of them. I'm impressed. Yeah. yeah. In fact, one of the most impressive things about this display is that you always are dumbfounded by how short people were when these things were made. Because the suits of armor that are on display all look like they were for people who were about five feet tall. And you realize, ah, oh, perfect. It turns out people were short in the olden days. Because even these, like, big pole arms that you were thinking, oh, they're like these gigantic things from, like, readings. You see them in real life and you're going, yeah, they're impressive. But they weren't as big as people, you would have thought they would have been based on the size of people. And you, you very easily can tell that when these weapons were made, the average height of people was much shorter than, than average. But then you go through there, and it's like all of the, the halls of the art that you're looking for is right beyond that gallery. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm going there. Yeah, and th there are just hundreds of pieces. Like, they're big galleries. Some have, like, just, like, dozens of paintings on the walls and things like that in three tiers. And you can spend all day there. You can yeah. then go downstairs to the cafeteria. And... It's like one of those situations where it's like, oh, if I had, like, a little bit more money, I would love to have one of these in my home. You know, sort of, sort of dealies. Yeah. Um... Did you ever visit your husband's family in the old country? Like, did he ever take you on like a honeymoon or no, a family thing? No, he uh, he doesn't like talking about his family. Okay. <laughs> he um, he kind of said, you know, he, he I, I think that he was kind of like a, 
what what's the word um disowned oh okay so yeah he's kind of he doesn't like talking about it okay which is fine i don't want you know i'm not going to bother him about no it, that's so. perfectly fair yeah so you spend the whole day at the museum do you do you, just the two of you or just by yourself oh he's at work oh okay yeah oh the guy who doesn't have a real job, he spends a lot of time at work. He's an accountant. Oh, he's a real accountant. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was one of those like uh, CPAs who just does like 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 concierge work. So... <laughs> he's a real accountant. He doesn't. Okay. He doesn't need to be an accountant. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> but... All right. That's perfectly fair. So um, <laughs> yeah. So you spend the day and you're just looking at art and. You pretty much pass it pretty easily. Because your husband is at work, you come home for dinner and stuff like that, as opposed to staying there and having snacks and eating in the cafeteria or whatnot. It's a very nice cafeteria, by the way. Their steak fries are second to none. Mm -hmm. Well, we already steak fries. All right. Oh, and free refills and coffee all day. Oh, sweet. So, fantastic. Yeah, a cup of coffee. <laughs> what do you do when you go home? Uh, so... When I go home, I crack another energy drink and, uh, like, am freaked out by this encounter with this librarian. So I, I like, pull up all the details I had found on him. Like, this yep. is this Jean guy who's a librarian. I was nice. You were nice, but I'm still freaked out. Yep. Um, I don't trust you. So you find out his history. You, you realize he's had his name changed when he got married. That his real name was not August, nor is his husband's name. Uh, they both changed their names to August. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of funny because it turns out they got married in August, so you're thinking, oh, look at this. They're hilarious. They want them to make Very their cute. last name the month they were That's married. It's cute yeah. It's an August wedding. Yes. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> Beautiful. Yeah, and so you look into the history, and, you know, there's some... You know, how, are you one of those people who's, like, super thorough? It's like, oh, I want to know what your mother's maiden name is, how much money you have in bank accounts. And um, I feel like I would not be super thorough. I feel okay. like I would be very, like, like litty and like like back and forth and like down this hole and then down this hole and then sure. so you find out enough generic information like you're not getting really invasive information mm -hmm. but very easy public record searches it's like oh he used to live in sleepy okay. hollow and then they lived here before sleepy hollow yeah That's that weird. kind of thing yeah the, it's interesting because for a long time you actually thought sleepy hollow was not a real place and yeah. it's just a fictional location and you're like wait there's really a sleepy hollow in america mm -hmm. um and, and you do also notice that his husband's last name is associated with a famous mob family, which is kind of well known. It's like, oh, okay, so maybe there's some association there. Hmm. But there's no way... There's no way the mob is on to me. They don't have... They don't have, compu like, they don't have my level of computer people, do they? Oh, yeah, they do. I mean, no. I guess they must. Oh, I mean, they could buy people like that. <laughs> they did yeah. send one of their top agents to talk to you. <laughs> The main thing that triggers this is it. that he's super stereotypically Italian, and so as soon as you make the mob connection, it's like, oh my gosh, he's like literally the mob from Central Casting. <laughs> I don't. It's just like too. It's too much. I don't believe. It. <laughs> yeah, they, you, have they you have pictures of them, and they literally look like mob people from like books and comics. This guy like can't that. be in the fucking mob. It's like, do you find like a like one wedding picture, <laughs> and yeah. in the background, there's like. One kingpin looking man. Yeah. <laughs> His name's Tony. That's a dead giveaway. Yeah. Oh They're going to like the movies and like full on suits with sunglasses. The only thing that makes you pause is that it's so obvious that you feel like they would be the worst mobsters. It's, it'd be like, like it's just hey, so we're gonna be mobsters. Should we like act and dress like mobsters? Yeah. We need to grow the mobster mustache. It's like, are they it's all even, about image. Are they even yeah. a gay couple? Or is this real deep cover? Monsters don't really make Shit. it secret that they're in the mob. They don't. I, I mean, they deny it, but they always act like, oh, of course we're in the mob. It's yeah. sexy to be in the Everybody mob. knows that. Yeah. Uh, well, I you know maybe... We, uh... They own a pasta restaurant in New York. <sighs> you gotta... Yeah, okay. I, I mean... It's New York pasta. Uh, man, I'm really hesitant to, like, actually dig deep on mob stuff. Like, that's... That's almost, or maybe even worse than digging deep on government stuff. Maybe, ah, oh, man. You didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the librarian comes over and says, you didn't see nothing. Anyway, so I go to, I go to sleep for a few hours. Mm -hmm. I'll wake up probably like 3 or 4 in the afternoon. Um, and so Saturday, you said? So nope. obviously I'm not doing homework. Not Saturday like afternoon. Um, you could be doing homework, but it's pretty clear you don't need to do homework. Yeah. I'm. So I am... Looking like I've decided, come to the conclusion that I need to uh, 
get some get more information about spray itself so like talk to the doctor um maybe see if i can get in contact with the family it's very easy kid. to hack the hospital's records to show when the doctor will be on duty <laughs> so yeah, finding him there will not be difficult okay yeah because we're still running on windows 95 <laughs> if if that yeah However, it's probably more like it's the legacy it's, system. It's, it's probably Vista. like DOS. It's, like it's visual basic. It's Vista. It's Vista. Oh my god. We were convinced to upgrade, and we're not going to do it again. <laughs> we upgrade to XP. Yeah, so so you can find his schedule pretty easily. The main issue is how can you get him to talk to you? Yeah. Because you're not only just a 21-year-old kid from the university, but you're gross. Well, that's true. <laughs> Put that on. Now, this is the doctor taking care of Peter's coma kid, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And you're the surgeon who operated on. He was the guy. person who was on call on the day the kid was brought in. Oh, and okay. That's how they initially met. But he's not the attending because oh, this okay. is not his business. Mm -hmm. It just happens that he was on call that day and was, was right, there. The and mm -hmm. because he was ranking, it was his job to like do the intake, sign off, and blah, blah, blah. But now that this is an ongoing chronic situation, it's really just like, oh, we're going to come and look. It's like, oh, look, still alive. And then they walk on. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we... I can pretend to be a like chemistry or biology student at... U Chicago, right? I've got my like. I already know a lot about U Chicago. That's an easy, yeah. like, slightly different. So I can like, I don't know, make up something or like come up with a professor who's sponsoring me and like go and say, hey, I'm I'm like, doing a research project on this drug called color spray. You know, could I talk to you about this? Sure, you could easily do that. Okay. The question is, will he see you? Yeah. Well, so is he? Uh, what is my strategy here? So, is he on duty today or tonight? Sure. Okay. Oh, wait, no, he just pulled a on-call shift, so he would not be on duty today. Okay. It's also Saturday. Surgeon, like, there are clear yeah. days that surgeries happen, but usually, unless it's a high-level situation or an urgent situation, they don't wait for surgeons coming Yeah, that's something you Okay. Uh, well, maybe that's what I'll do on Monday, then cut class, and not that I ever go to class, but, you know, <laughs> cut class and go talk to that doctor. All right. Um... So I get that all of that lined up, sort of make some preparations there. And then maybe I'll shoot you an email, Peter. Sure. Ooh. Right. Who, who's it What's from, though? That's you've the real got question. mail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's from... I don't know. You gotta have a cool alias. You gotta oh, have a cool well, hacker he, alias. He has well, an alias, but does he want to use that yeah. alias? Well, I mean... No, so I'm not. I'm gonna keep up the the like college chemistry project, uh, um, and just like send you a quick email, like. Oh, the same inquiry that you're doing a research project on color spray, and you've heard that he. Like, yeah, and like I know you're a chemist, and you've like probably looked into it a little bit. I mean, technically you are. It's just you're not doing it for school. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing it at school. That's almost the same thing, yeah. and I'm also not a chemistry student. So you're asking me what my thoughts on, like, color spray? Uh, if you can meet Yeah, him. or if we could, like, sit down for a, like, to talk about it a little bit. Or if you have any... Or a lot. Or, a lot. Talk about or if a you lot. have any insight you'd like to share. Has, has someone found out? Everyone is so fucking barren. <laughs> Does someone know that it was Dude, me? You that it was my... That was based on my drug. The email's like worded in a very like threatening way. <laughs> like it's horribly, horribly shocking because this whole thing was covered up so well that some random kid at the university suddenly reaches yeah. out to you to ask this question. For, first of all, this drug is so bizarre and so like on the um, radar yeah. of people who are basically shadowy that the fact that some random kid would have a project about it is just bizarre to begin yeah. with. And the fact that they reached out to you, the only person who probably is actually has any real knowledge of this outside of whoever the people are who stole right. it, is just coincidental beyond imagination. Um, I'm going to have to just assume that it reached out to me because uh, I have a PhD in biochemistry. I've no, written a couple well, so, papers on So I say uh, in the email, like, like, I know that you have all these credentials, but I also know you have a personal connection. Mm. <gasps> 
a threat? But like <laughs> because son. your son is in the hostel, <laughs> I'd be happy to meet with you and discuss. It does the seem to come from a legit U Chicago email yeah. address. I'd be happy to discuss this with you. What time would you like to meet? <laughs> uh, what about? <laughs> It was a graveyard smash. <laughs> it was, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm free for coffee I'm tomorrow. Totally. That sounds perfect. Oh. Excellent. How about uh, There's that X-Cafe. Starbucks in yeah. the Northwestern Hospital <laughs> that I hear is pretty good. God damn it. There's a cop. Uh, yeah. There's that, a, that will be perfect. <laughs> there's a cafe See you there, uh, in the line. In 1030. The, you got it. No, 1030. Why did I do this? To <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my it's gosh. Who's so awake at 10 You're trying to be normal, and you realize what... Yeah. I, what a terrible Oh, game. that's true. You have a normal life. Not I'm, like these like late night vigilantes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a responsible guy. Yeah. I live a normal life. Alright, so you guys have a thing set up for tomorrow. What does Joseph do on his weekends when he's uh Um not conspiracy theorizing? Or I guess you're yeah. always conspiracy theorizing. <laughs> yeah, well like it's not yeah, it, most of my time, spare time, is either spent doing research or going to dinner at my parents' house. But that's oh, that's answer. right. But that's that weekly Sunday. dinner thing. Yeah. Is, do you, is that on the weekends? Yes, it's on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Sunday okay. But that's that's mostly about keeping up appearances. Okay. Because my parents, obviously, are super worried about me because of my experience. Yep. And so they're always like, how are you doing? And I always have to be like, oh, I'm fine. I'm doing just great. You know, nothing to worry about. And so they've got that it. typical eggshell is crazy yes. son thing going. Yeah. Like they're yeah, convinced yeah, yeah. that you're crazy. So you don't tell them about, like, new, no. new thing? No. Not at all. Oh, mm-hmm. my. No, in fact, I haven't talked to them at all about what happened really in Iraq yet. They don't really know. You're like a Dateline 2020, like, making a murder thing in the making. <laughs> but was, we never knew the whole time. No. There was no warnings. If this was, if I hadn't recently just had an event, which mm-hmm. I did, but if I didn't, I'd be in the park, either right. looking for somebody to play chess with, or people watching and feeding the birds. Oh, that's ah. not suspicious. But, um... <laughs> yeah, no that's way. Cool. I mean... But since I did recently just experience a very similar event, I am spending the entire day, like, pouring over everything I've had and gathered up to this point. Like, I'm trying to understand the correlation between death, apparent death, and, like, this shadowy figure appearing. Right? Like, I'm just like... Ah, like, like I'm theorizing, like, does this creature appear, or does this, whatever it is, entity appear in areas of, like, extreme pain and desperation? Like... Is there some correlation between the hospital environment and the war environment? Like what? So your research mm-hmm. is so robust as to tell you almost nothing. It turns out that great <laughs> death imagery in mythology is pretty much not only universal, but it almost is the same everywhere in the world. Like there's always a shadowy figure of death. There's always yeah. a reaper story. Like, there's always, like, war shows up on the battlefield. Like, the, the the stories are so commonplace that, like, you're going, oh, yeah, this happens everywhere. There's a Native American correlate there. There's an Asian correlate to it. That, And when you look up the things that are close, like Middle Eastern stories and things like that, and Egyptian stories, it's even closer. It's like, oh, yeah, there are these, like, big haboobs that happen, and then people see the shadows of the gods in there, and, like, ibis-like figures and, like, death collectors yeah. who come and take the souls of the living and whatnot. It's like, there's these stories. It turns out that from your research, you pretty much determined that almost every movie that's made and made about these things is actually based on real mythology. Okay. Like, these beliefs exist everywhere. <laughs> Do I spend all day watching White Noise? No, anyway, so uh, so two questions. Uh, first of all, have I ever been to determine like what the shadow thing looked like? Like an outline or anything? Especially with this new... The only thing is that you've never been able to determine how it is. In fact, over the years, your memory of it becomes more vague. Okay. Like you always knew that you saw a figure in the sand, mm-hmm. but over time, both because of therapy and things like that, it's like, oh, you know, it was a sandstorm. There are shapes in sandstorms. You were just seeing a shape, right. and. More and more, you've been doubting the validity of experience. And then you went to medical school and you became a scientist and a doctor. And you're like, oh, of course, you know, these are hallucinations. It was a high stress environment. People get lost in sandstorms all the time. There are tons of stories of people who are entire villages that disappear in sandstorms only be found like decades later, right? Right. Um, People lose sight of direction, time, things like that. And then you had this event 
and then suddenly it would all solidified again. Like yeah. you did not see any specific features, but in your soul you know that that was not only the same type of image, but it was the same entity. Okay, so my next step then would be to turn my attentions towards the man who died and try to figure out everything I could about him. Um, so resources, can I have access to the hospital like? Death records, like, is there anyone for me to figure yes, out who this guy was? Yes, you easily have death records for the hospital. You okay. find his name. Uh, right. You basically determine that he was recently released from prison. Okay. Uh, that he's only been out for a week at most, maybe six days. And that he was some kind of street tough. That he dealt drugs. And he lived the way he died. Or he died the way he lived. Like, you know, I, I also that. suspect that it was he died from an unknown assassin, right? Well, you because I've been suspecting that that's been building up. Right, you've seen okay. other people come in with these types of wounds, and they're professional hit type wounds. Like you've been in the military, you know that this is not like some guy with forty eight on the street. Right, like, this, these are people whose job it is to kill people, and they're very careful. It's like one to the brain pan, one to the heart. You're done, right? Yeah. You're just out. And so you see these. But you also realize that, you know, Chicago is like a war zone now. And there are people going to hire high-level professional people. Um, the only thing that's unusual is the pattern. Like, you usually pay money to hire people this good. And you definitely know that the people who are being killed don't warrant it. Like, mm -hmm. you've seen a bunch of these professional killings. You more and more are getting the sense that it's not a bunch of professional killings, but one person doing the killing. But the people who are being killed really inconsistent like maybe for every three or four criminal people one is a cop or somehow involved in law okay. enforcement like a prosecutor or something like that so sir i bet you it's that catalyst guy well no because i actually With a crazy special sword that like duplicates i actually know shots. catalyst though right you don't you know, know that he's this guy. You don't, you don't yeah. know who's oh, Catalyst. you know kyle oh because i thought the way we met is that i had prepared one of your one of your oh one of your soul. Are we? Uh, are we? Uh, are we that? Are we going to start that deep into it? I don't know. You can I don't know establish where we're that in. as backstory if you like. Well, I was wondering yeah. if that was going to happen later. Or... Oh no, that that is up to you if you had that. Okay, so no, we, we we can have that. that. That sounds fair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So Ooh. do I know I that, you, seems that you're yeah. this vigilante guy then? Uh yeah 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 you know that I I'm, do yes. So how did this how did this occur? How did we meet um, up? Like let's, let's where go, was I? Let's go back to the night that uh john was taken into the hospital okay sure uh so i was rushed in i was there you were there mm -hmm. um uh how about how about something like i i i grabbed i i held on to you and i said i need to know what's in him give me his blood what what I'm, That's... A, I'm a bit of a biochemist i need to know what happened to my son give me his blood or i will take it myself uh, the, blood. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, sir. If you're, if I am the vampire father, give me his blood. Blood. If you're the legal guardian of this boy, <laughs> then I can, I can give you. No, you can't. I can't. Can. Can. Give samples. No, no, he's the legal so guardian. Mean. All right, all right. That's not how it works. I can't we, say I'm Nick's father. I like some of his blood. It's like here you are. Well, you can <laughs> like, send him home with the whole bucket. <laughs> whole handful of. Yeah, that is totally not how it works. Yeah, it's like okay. I didn't know of the family relation. All right. No, you brought my son in for drawing blood samples from his no. son. So I think, oh. yeah, I'll just, oh, I, or you walk in on him sharpening his sword over his son's body and whispering to himself. <laughs> do, I, do I know? I know you're the boy's father though, right? Like I, I have yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you know he's the father. All right. The paperwork shows, his, his wife is also there. Right, yeah, yeah. Alex, yeah. okay. Um, so I'm like, if he were at home, he could say, hey, John, I need a blood sample and that's just them. But here in this environment, you as a doctor of the hospital, you can't just take people's blood samples yeah, yeah. and give them the civilians. So I just, yeah. Yeah. I, sorry. Especially I think when they might be like drug uh, Yeah. Based. I think you're experiencing some distress. I need you to have a seat over here in the waiting room. We'll let you know when we have some more information about your son's condition. We're going to have to hold you. I'm definitely experiencing some distress right here. And listen, it's just a little bit. I can pay you. I just need a little bit of blood. Just a little file. <laughs> I'm... Just, 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 uh, just order one more yeah. test. Get I'm sorry, sir. I'm not gonna risk my medical license <laughs> <laughs> over over this. Go wait in the waiting room. We'll get you when we need you. Oh my goodness! No, I'm just gonna turn and walk off. Wow, oh, man. Looks like I'm gonna 
steal one of the vials that they take. Oh well, you have to take it. The vials that they yeah. don't take the vials and leave them there on the so counter. This, this is a flat. Like, this is a flashback yeah. scene, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Sure okay. So, but that that piece needles interest. and stuff. Right. So we do take blood from you. Know, you know, we do take blood too. You, you take a blood sample. Yeah, it's mandatory. But yeah. you take the samples you need. And then the nurse takes them with her. Right, but I get to see the results. Yeah. You will. At this moment, they're not ready yet. Yeah. Right. Don't That's fine. Yeah. So I think what I'm saying is I think if we if we skip ahead a bit, mm -hmm. I would have taken note of that kid's blood samples. The question is, by this point ahead in time, has he somehow already taken his son's blood somehow? I don't know. What would make more sense in the narrative? Me giving the data or... Uh, well, I mean, being able to so you're, no, it really just depends on what you what, want to do. Well, right? well like, your your son's in a coma under hospital care, mm -hmm. and I can't just take the blood from. I I just need to. Unless you want to sneak into the hospital, stick a syringe in your own son, and well, draw. Here, Peter, also, which you can do because yeah. you have every right to be there at his bedside. Yeah, he can't draw yeah. blood and give it to you, but when no one's looking and you're just there, it's not like I there mean, are cameras in the yeah. rooms. Like, as long as he doesn't. Here's, here's, the here's, the the here's a question. So, if this is like a flashback scene. And you successfully get blood from your son, like, in the future, you still don't have, like, answers. So what is getting blood going to oh, provide Oh, uh, well, you? so that's, that's what the, that's what alerts me that color spray okay. is my drug. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, otherwise you Then know. it makes sense that he would get it somehow. Yeah. yeah. But, or, um, you I you could easily get a blood sample from your son without alerting anyone because you have every right to be in his room at all hours. That's right. possible. Then I'll just mm -hmm. take the blood. You know, you know well, what you should do? You should yeah. take the blood, go do your analysis, and then come back to him and be like, Yeah, that's what I was going to do. No, that's, that's what I was yeah. going to do. Like, I think you if I got this information. You will get your results the following morning. Yeah. He probably won't get them for a couple of days because he has to find an opportunity mm -hmm. and get to his lab and do his own research. Okay. Well, because like my, like my thought would be because of how distressed he was, I would have made note of that. And when I noticed that he had color spray in his blood, I would have been like, oh, I got I to gotta tell the father this. Like, I would explain to him, even if that broke protocol a little bit. If that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. If, but I don't know. Like, do you think that makes yeah, more sense? I think, yeah, I think okay. we both, like, come, come arrive at each other and be like, it's color spray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you, you, guys, you... you guys meet and just yeah. That's color, it's color spray. spray. On the count of three, we're gonna say what we think it is. <laughs> so one, we both, we both call it the Ebola. exact same blood sample yeah. chart. Oh. Like, uh, one, two, well, so three. our equipment is different. So I would analyze the blood and get the <laughs> chemical compounds. Right. And so you found uh, something interesting there in the blood. We both found it's color spray. But what's your data? Can I see it? So this is like near your son's room in the hospital, yeah, yeah. right? I think we met. We're again. like standing outside of it. Yeah, uh, I like looking around. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely spray. Did your son get infected with it somehow? I you don't, don't use, do you? N no, no, I don't. I don't use it. I. I like, admit, I'm I was checking him for signs. So, of so, so here's usage. here's the interest. Here, so now, now this is important for you to know. As a doctor, the reason you know is color spray is because you've had enough patient cases come through where your patients have died of supposedly haven't taken oh, this drug called color spray. So this is an anomaly, a huge... Okay, yeah, Basically, what it is is that the only reason you know anything is color spray is you have other color spray cases to compare it to. So I'm... Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna... I'm so gonna... for a civilian to be able to say he knows his color spray is super shocking to you Nobody because... Nobody knows it's... Unless he knows... Like, basically, to your mind, the only way you would he would know is, like, if he knew that his son was doing color spray... Or somehow provided it. Because as far as you know, nobody knows how color spray is made or what's in it that does what it does. Right. So your only information comes from, we have a profile based on what we found out from other cases. Right. If this is his first experience, the only way he would know is, oh, I saw my son buying it, or he knows something that none of you in the medical profession knows. Yeah, so I think I'll rephrase the question and say, how, how, are you, how do you know that? I uh, took a look at his blood. I found a uh, what do you mean you took a look at his blood compound? I had a sample at home. I forgot about. I <laughs> <laughs> like I like give you I like give you a look, Peter. Uh, Peter, uh, roll, roll for that. No, 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 no that's fine. No, I take a blood sample from my children every month. I'll give you a look. that's like, 
I'm pretty sure I know exactly what happened, but I can't prove it. So I'm like, all right, but but how do you know it's color spray? It was a foreign compound. It was unlike anything I've seen before. And so I assumed it must have been color spray. But you, you don't know about the drug at all? You've never had any other interactions with it? No. I am a biochemist by my profession. I develop drugs, actually. Uh, um, <laughs> Peter. Not, That's not suspicious. <laughs> my God. And so uh, my, my I, I, I've, I've, I've done my research on what it could be, and there's only one thing it can be. It's spray. Where are you a biochemist at? Uh, altered Solutions. Do I have any friends over at Altered Solutions? <laughs> okay. I can pull up my, my badge. They're, yeah. they're a tech pharmaceutical. They're basically, like, they have more research doctors than real doctors there. They're mostly more chemists than they are physicians. Right. So, yeah, and certainly no one that you would have interacted with. Okay. So, okay. Well, the odd thing about this is that all the other uses of the spray have died up to this point. Your son is the first one to survive. Do you know why? No. That's why I'd like your permission to run a full slew of tests on your son. Maybe if we can understand what's keeping him alive, we can help out other patients. I'll give you permission, but only if you share the information with me freely. Um... That breaks so many protocols. Bargain. Roll bargain. I'm going to roll bargain. Okay. I succeed. I mean, do we want to use the resistance 16. table here? Like, No, this is actually character player on player. You ju- you can just agree whether or not oh, okay. you're going to violate protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up to you. He did succeed. He I'm succeeded. Not we don't need to do that. Well, he slipped yeah. you a 20. There's rules. <laughs> like, there's rules in the CLC system for PvP. But, uh, okay. What does Miss Sacagawea have so, to say? I, I, I can <laughs> offer you more information <laughs> on spray in the exchange. I've got a shiny quarter for you. In exchange that you openly give me the inf- the medical data that's going on with my son. Think about it. You could be the doctor who solves the spray mystery. I feel like you have every right to know your son's full condition. Excellent. That's what I can talk to you about. Perhaps we should work on this together. Could I get your uh? Could I get your phone number? We can talk about this, not in a hospital. Oh, good. over coffee. Let's start with email. Okay. Not gonna get out. Man, he's gonna <laughs> hassle now, you day and night. Now, seeing I imagine, fast forward like say a couple of months, I'm out as catalyst. I'm doing my swordsmanship. Oh, did you take a bullet? I got shot. Because you didn't realize bullets are faster yeah. than swords. <laughs> you brought a sword with the I took so much dodge, but bullets, my only weakness. I can't believe my fencing training didn't prepare yeah. me for this. The animes were wrong. Yep. I can't talk And so to I him. send a very frantic email to, uh, to Joseph with the title, I've been shot. <laughs> <laughs> Subject line, I've been shot. What, and what's the body message? The body is, oh, no, I've been I shot. Think... Can you please I, so help me? No, no hospitals. Like, sign. No, okay, so no. Hospitals start as like no. I think in the, in the, the months catalyst. since this scene has taken place, we've become closer and closer, and I eventually have given you my phone number. Yeah. Okay, uh, I call you I, and I say I've been shot. I also feel like this warrants more explanation because you call a surgeon and say I've been so shot. The They're gonna say call nine one one, you moron. Yeah, <laughs> like, I can't. Idiot. They can't know me. Come to my house. I can't take off my costume. Zipper stuff. You... They shot it off. Where Where are you right now? I tried to set up a deal in North Town. Is the North Town a real place? Uh, sorry. That's fine. North what, what was the, the boys, 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 town. boys Town? Boys Town is in the north. Back in the yard. It's near Wrigleyville where yeah. the delicious sushi restaurants are. I tried to set up a deal in Boys Land. Boys, 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 boys Land. <laughs> Boys, just on Wrigley Will. Boys Land, <laughs> Boys Town. Well, so I lost a lot of south. blood. I'm sorry. Oh my god! I just need boys. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> These boys are 30% off. <laughs> Gays all over Chicago are like, huh? Boys. Oh my god! Oh I tried to sell a deal. Peter, Peter's going they after the boys. They saw my, <laughs> they saw my sword. 
And then so they shot at me. And oh no! Oh my so, God. I managed to get away. I've been. Uh, they got me in the shoulder. So what do you sword? What are you talk? Where are you? I can explain everything. Um, do you have a car? Because yeah. <laughs> I can't drive yes, right now. Yes, I have a car. Okay, please drive to. What? I'm not. One four one seven. Thirty eight. All right, you you give him a street or an address. Um, uh, so first of all, you're gonna, you're gonna Uber up there because there's no way you're gonna find parking in Boys Town. Oh, fair enough. So, all of you are out of your mind. Uh, especially if you're trying to save some or Boys Land for that matter. Oh. Uh, so yeah. Just, My character up to this point has thought you were kind of a crazy eccentric who cared about his son a little too much. Yeah. Well, a lot, and kind of respected that. Now he's starting to think. You're just plain crazy. <laughs> you, by the way, that in in the conceit oh of the, the world, you know there are vigilantes out there. So nah, when he calls true. you and tells you this story, you're like, oh my god, this crazy father is one of those vigilante types. Have I? <laughs> and I've only heard... one of them uses a sword. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I go, I'll be right, I'll be right there, oh and I like hang god, up. Oh so I'm sitting, I'm sitting on a bench, <laughs> bleeding out. Oh my goodness. Just trying to appear normal. <laughs> so yeah, so, so I, pull out, I pull out a newspaper from the trash. And it's, <laughs> okay, it's, it's Chicago. How normal is that? Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily, <laughs> even in Chicago, I mean, it's Chicago, like so. all parks, there are always like weird homeless type people in oh, parks, no, no matter how nice they are, and even under the names. So yeah, you can find like one of those local little neighborhood parks that isn't super busy, and where drug dealers are not necessarily going down and just kind of like basically you want to look like you're a homeless guy who's just falling asleep or drunk or something all right i'll cover myself in newspapers because by this time <laughs> you know that you can't let the police catch you oh yeah so i think are you still in costume right it's black yes white. so i think i'll like i think i'll like come walking up hurriedly like with a doctor's bed because i know where he is yeah. and i'll come walking up and i'll be like what kyle <laughs> Yeah, that's me. <laughs> you should just sit up in the newspaper. <laughs> Couldn't have come a little faster, could you? I got I, here as I, soon as I could. I had to go the speed limit. I've been shot, you know. So I just like I like pull the newspapers <laughs> off of you <laughs> and look <laughs> down. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> what, what, I, I just kept talking about his home. I could explain, but I prefer to you know be take care of first. Oh my god! What's black and right? And I'm like I'm like looking I'm like looking the at the Chicago costume. Yeah. I'm like putting it all together. I know it's not a very good costume. Are it's you? more form of, or function over form. Are you catalyst? Look, <laughs> I'll, I'll, are you really catalyst? <laughs> Let's get let's let's get this gunshot one taken care of before you know. Oh, I'm gonna lose. All right, is there a no-tell motel nearby? No, no not in this. Really? One. Okay, we can go to my house. There's no one there. That's so bad. It's true, no. though. Definitely so no one. I can't ignore a man bleeding out in front of me. My Hippocratic goes. So yes. Yeah. How far away is your house? Uh, I, I get to give you the address. It's not too far. Okay. We we get a cab. Sure. We get a cab, please. Sure. All right. We can just be like, he's had a rough night. Yeah. Okay. So I get you up to your apartment building. It's like lay down in the bed. It's a house. Oh yeah, it's a house. House. Like, it's uh when you enter, it's very disheveled. There's a bunch of newspapers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I have I have the wall with the red oh. yarn. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's like and and on the top is where where's the spray coming from? Wait, please. <laughs> Can the three of you also have walls of stream <laughs> yeah. I really want to have like the sole character whose intent is not to be like in the middle of this. No, what, what I'm most excited about is that they all end up with string walls, but they're all vastly different. Yeah, uh, mine's for the bag lady. His yeah. is for the, oh. the drug. I've actually just oh. got two. Mine's for this new guy. Dan is for the I, mafia. Okay. I fall on the couch and go, "Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm catalyst." I want to be the change in this city. Oh gosh, shut up. Okay, look. <laughs> so, I, by the way, because you've been researching your own stuff for a long time and you've always had in your mind what a good string wall might look like, this is the example of how not to do a string wall. Yes. It's like it's like it turns out that if your string wall has too many strings on it, you learn nothing from it. <laughs> and they're all the same color, so there's no information <laughs> gleaned. I I make drugs, not string walls. So I'm doing I'm doing like the, I'm like doing like the disinfectant. 
I like, I like. Let me begin know. with my origin story. Oh gosh! So I like, I like disinfecting the wounds. I, Kyle I, went to. I take out Kyle surgery scissors the, and cut away part of the thing. Kyle was part of the historical fencing society. He I, was a bit I of a grab, I grab an apple and I bite down on this. But so you don't scream. Now. Okay. I have there a we sword. go. Okay. Then I start. Turns out apples are really ineffective as that because as soon as <laughs> you bite down, the apple is even. Okay. So wooden stick, something, right. leather belt, belt. my belt. Yeah. There we go. Put this belt. Okay. Yeah. Here, here, here's your foot in your mouth. Yeah. So then I I do I do surgery. You also do, I do the thing. You do a towel. Surgery. Also. Yeah. A towel. Yeah. So it turns out that this is a very simple wound that doesn't that hasn't destroyed any muscles or shattered any bones or killed any ligaments. So it's actually super easy. Okay. Good. It's, it's effectively a tweezer job. And put a band aid on it. You were you were lucky. Yes. You were it really hurts lucky. Like hell, yeah. but it's not like significantly damaging. It looks worse than it is. So yeah, I, I patch him up. Uh there's a part of you that sees his wound, realizes he's used it as a saber, and you can't help yourself and go, just to make sure, you're not really left handed, are you? <laughs> Do you have six fingers on your left hand? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Because it's like that wound on your shoulder is going to make your left hand ineffective as a sword wielding arm for a couple months. No, I use my right arm. Then you're fine. It's time you ought to learn why I know so much about spray. It all began when I was developing a a drug to cure Alzheimer's over at Altered Solutions. It got stolen. It... It didn't work out in human trials. It, there's comas, death, bleeding from the eyes, nose, and ears. It went terrible. Alter Solutions covered it up. Didn't want anyone to know about it. But it got stolen, and the cops didn't want anything to do with it. Alter Solutions didn't care about it. They didn't want anyone to know that one of their drugs is out on the streets. But I know that it's my drug. My drug that's out on the streets. That's harming these people. That's harmed my son. <laughs> and so I feel personally responsible. And must like and this is my mess. So you Clean thought it. so you thought the best response to that would be to dress up in a costume and go out and stab people. I can't just go out in my normal clothes. <laughs> yes, but a sword? <laughs> like a rapier. I guess it got you noticed. Listen. What is what is this? I like point at the string wall. The spray is coming from somewhere. I just need to find the source of the spray. There's there's gotta be a lab somewhere. Something's creating this spray. And I gotta find it. And so I'm looking at all the recent deaths, every place that there's a dealer, all up and down in Chicago. Have you taken any of this to the police? No. Why? It's my drug, it's my duty, it's my son. Okay. Like, let's compare the string walls together. If you continue down this path, you are going to get seriously injured one day. And you will most likely die before helping your son out at all. I see two possible futures, and both I am okay with. Both I have made my future. I either die trying to save the city, or I cut the person who took my drug and ruined this city. Have you considered how your son's going to feel if he has to grow up without a father? What happens if he gets out of his coma one day and you're not there? He'll know that his father fought for the city. Will he? Will he really? How could I look him in the eye and say, I'm sorry, you lost your teenage years because of this drug that I made? Man, you just say that. <laughs> yeah, but it, it wasn't your fault. You didn't steal it. I made it, though. How it did, was my okay. design. There's, I thought of it. There's still something I don't understand. How did your son even ingest color spray in the first place? When the human trials failed, I became distant. I missed a couple of his baseball games. He was at a friend's house. Oh, yeah. I I got really into World of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the Gathering release this new starter set. I just let, let that one I, slow burn. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It was 
It's been a tough couple of years. <laughs> and so, I don't know how. I don't know why. So, wait. Know. So your son could have ingested it from, from somebody, though. Yeah. Wait. I, I don't know who. I'd love to ask him. Please go. All right. My son. You have... My son. You have to stop. <laughs> you can't keep going out like this. <laughs> Joseph... I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I will stop at nothing until at the end of my blade is the still beating heart oh my gosh. of a man or woman who stole my drug. So I ask of you just one thing. Please just keep this a secret. And if I have another gunshot wound, I'd appreciate it. If you <laughs> patch me up. Would you mind if I get your pager? <laughs> it happens a lot. I'm not going to stop using the sword. If you kill everyone in the city of Chicago, eventually you'll find the culprit. I'm, I'm halfway to just taking you into the police. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I've gone so far. I would hate to have to kill you to silence you. Yeah, I mean... Please, Joseph, you're my friend. Oh, just... dropping that bomb. <laughs> oh, Joseph, friend. I love you. Don't, don't ship me. <laughs> I haven't it's felt, the, I haven't felt the touch episode. of a, a Put human the hand. Put champagne bottle away. <laughs> I ship myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's been lonely after the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Look, I won't call you off, and I'm pretty good oh, at this. Oh, jeez. All right. I mean, like, this is the first time I've been shot in, like, you know, a couple months. That's pretty good, isn't it? In, in, like, a couple up months. Up for... yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, now that you both think about it, oh, yeah. it's kind of miraculous. Like, you made it this far. All right. Okay, you call me when you need help, then. You understand? That I can do. Don't go to the hospital. I won't. <laughs> Except to visit my son. At least... And also you work there. Invest in some oh, sort I, of... I work at a oh, okay. pharmaceutical company. Yeah. Invest in some sort of protection. Like body armor in the costume, Kevlar, something. Oh, Kevlar, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> See, in all these fights, I always envision them having a knife. Usually oh, they do. Okay. Or I get to them before they get the gun, so I know that's... Thank you for the advice. I, uh, I appreciate it. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to rest. I have been shot, after all. Thanks I'm, go I'm going to leave in, in disbelief. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the so, advice about the Kevlar. So basically, the next four months are like just a super routine of him showing up to the hospital, you looking at him like, oh, you're going to be dead by tomorrow. And you both being relatively shocked that in the time since this incident he manages to not get shot yeah kyle discovers that this idea that people have knives in chicago has no evidence behind it if people have knives they're not using it everyone has a gun yeah it's like like the, the bag ladies have guns in this town and so they're everywhere <laughs> which is what makes it that shocking because you would think that a guy who's sort of famed for running around as a vigilante with a sword would just be shot on sight. But somehow he seems to be escalating all of his work and not getting shot. Which means that he's either the luckiest person you've ever met or he's got a secret he's not telling you. Okay. Because you were certain that like he would have a much worse wound in the intervening time than the four months since he first revealed who he was to you. He's been fine. So, back to the present. Yes. When I'm trying to find information out about this patient who died on my operating table. Yes. You are the one connection I have to the streets. So, I'm going to go to you with this. So, I think I think we're probably at your house. Like, mm -hmm. I'm giving you a call. I need to be with you. Ooh, are you, like, brandy buddies now? <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll just drink beer. Like... <laughs> I don't, know if you're, buddies. Yeah. I don't Sorry, know if you're. Sorry, I yeah. run it wrong in different circles. I don't know if you're any kind of buddy with <laughs> with, uh, yeah. with 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 Joseph coming around every once in a while. The place is now a lot cleaner. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's there's actually someone to impress. So, so there's not as many newspapers around. The, the couple of the little things of yarns are more 
put together mm-hmm. nice. They're yeah, multicolored mm-hmm. now. Yeah, there's more than one There's color. System optimization <laughs> chart. Yeah. One day you came and okay, said, now. you know, there's more than one color. <laughs> yeah. <you are."> yeah. <laughs> Do you get mad that he doesn't know this? It's like yeah. I worked so hard. Yeah. Don't you ever go- all day to change these yarn colors? <laughs> Did you ever go to string con? All right. <laughs> so you want a Hobby Lobby? I sit down. And like fold my hands, you know, in your living room, like we usually do. And I go, I need your, I need to call in a favor. I've asked many favors from you. It's about time I pay you back. There was a man last night who died on my operating table. It, it wasn't my fault, but he died. And when he died, I saw something. Something I haven't seen in a long time. Something I haven't seen since the war. Joseph, you've never talked about the war before. I need you to look into this man for me. You have connections. You've been around the streets. I need you to investigate him and tell me what you can about him. There's this image of me online of being this vigilante that talks amongst the street, but really I just go to where the dealers are and I cut them. <laughs> well, unfortunately true. <laughs> this this guy was a dealer, right? Like Eddie Bennett? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. some low life drug dealer so from the street. This man was also a dealer. This may turn out to be mutually beneficial. You can figure out who he had connections to. Find more people to uh, cut to pieces. I don't kill him. I just cut him. <laughs> Kyle, I've seen some of your work come through the hospital. They die. You've killed people. No, they don't. No. Nah. <laughs> no. I just cut Kyle, him. Kyle, are you seriously not aware of this? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. It's a rumor. I haven't killed anyone, have I? Yes, you have killed people. <laughs> I thought you knew I, that. I will slowly get up, walk over to the brandy stand, <laughs> pour a big old glass. Would you like one? No. I wouldn't. All right. Well, this is a lot to take in. <laughs> so I never drank this. It's possible. I can't stop thinking out that at the beginning. James told me, oh, by the way, I've decided that instead of psychology, I'm going to take psychiatry so I can help people regain sanity. Right, psychoanalysis. Now it's very clear he's just using his psychoanalysis powers for evil. It's like, you know, how can I most traumatize Kyle? I know, I'm going to break his illusion and force it down his throat. Well, yeah, he needs to be made aware of what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> first, it's it's immersion therapy, James. <laughs> well, that's fair. <laughs> the first yeah. cut is the day. Hey, yeah. yeah, the cold <laughs> splash of reality. <laughs> if I had a psychoanalyst whose main foundation was I saw an undead god in the woods of Afghanistan, this would be the kind of psychotherapy I would use. I can't. It was in a. I can't stop thinking of your character as this guy in like this oh, Zorro right. mask going. Ha ha! I just like. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he got. The fr- uh, you probably, in fact, his mask looks like a Zorro yeah. mask. Yeah. Undead. I know, but it's uh, all right. I take a big drink and be like, I'll worry about those problems later. But for now, <laughs> who's this guy? Yes. All right. Eddie Bennett. Eddie I Bennett. Like, I give him the information I've dug up. Have I, in There's my, not much info. Yeah. Uh, have I heard of nope. Eddie Bennett? No. You rarely ever ask anyone's names. Like, you barely <laughs> find out the names of the people that you actually confront. <laughs> Wow. Man, am I just a bad vigilante? <laughs> I thought that was the point. Oh. Well, because your mission is just to go after people I and guess, find, yeah. like, this fire just gotta, yeah. Yeah. Don't care who they are. Yeah. You act Damn like people. I'm joking whenever I say that all five of you are out of your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> when will you really realize? Because the identity of these people aren't really important. Like, the yeah. whole thing is that you're just I'm trying to find info. You so you go, oh, <laughs> you should go after Vinny, who's in this place at this point, and you go find Vinny and you shake him up and you cut him and Vinny tells you nothing that's useful and then you forget Vinny because he's not important. Right, yeah. Because it's the end of the leads. Yeah. So yeah. basically the whole thing is that you barely ever get people's names because you only need to remember them long enough to find them and then when they're dead ends you just kind of like let it drop. You want them to leave. Just like that's the why your board is so yeah. chaotic because it actually fails to actually produce like long-term data 
because most of the leads end up being, oh, here's a vert string that goes here, and then it's done, and then I have a new picture to stick up there. So there's a bunch of overlapping strings. It's visually appealing, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. In a Jackson Pollock kind of way. How did Eddie die, by the way? He got shot. Professionally. It, yeah, professionally is what I was about to add, yeah. Hmm. It seems that there has been a string of these cases recently. It's odd, though. The data doesn't really make sense. If this man's a professional assassin, the things he's been doing have been strange. he hit a couple of criminals every now and then. Or woman, I guess. He'll hit a couple of criminals every now and then. And then, and then once or twice, maybe every couple of what? Months? Yeah, it's yeah. mostly criminals, but basically... Again, every four or five criminals, yeah. there's a person that seems like they're involved in law enforcement. Yeah, there's there's a cop or a, or a prosecutor. Hmm. That's strange. Huh. It's an odd... Because you think if it was somebody on the criminal side of things, they'd just be killing cops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone's playing both sides. Or neither side. Interesting. I, uh, I'll look into this. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Don't get yourself killed out there. I never do. Yeah, I don't. I haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> That's kind of an, an always true statement. Like, don't be killed. I've never been. Yeah, it hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet. Yeah, see, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'll get up and leave. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good talk. Scratching my head at how weird that interaction was. <laughs> yeah. Like so, all so, the interactions yeah. with you. <laughs> so as the final thing. We'll deal with that later. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that I kill people. As the final thing, Robbie, your prisoner does come in on Sunday. Okay. So he gets processed and everything. Yes. And I'm assuming I'm very involved in that process and placement. Of you where can be. Uh, you're in charge, so you can be more involved if you'd like, or you could have underlings just get it done. He does come in alone. He's okay. the only case today, so you can be involved or not. We're lower staffed on Sundays, so I will be more involved. Sure. Sounds good. He comes in, he's in his orange jumper, mm-hmm. he's cuffed and chained, and the two officers who bring him in basically lead him into intake, where you know they <clears throat> you take his picture and get his fingerprints and yeah. you know, take whatever it is that might be his possessions that are still available and put them into your your safes. Yeah, do you know about what time he comes in at? Roughly one one forty afternoon. Okay. I'm trying to I have to keep it. in mind that they have a long lunch hour. Uh, there we go. Okay. Does he seem like he's he's resisting what is not at all. He is mind? totally passive, like completely resigned to this. He's okay. not defiant. He's not like, ha ha, I'm the Joker. This place can't hold me. Like, he's, <laughs> like, Does he say anything? No, he, he's got like minimal communication. Okay. He's like, oh, you caught me. I'm in prison. This sucks. Okay. So for better placement of where he's going to be in the, in the penitentiary, I'm going to ask him what sort of skills he already has. Like if he cooks or if he's... Because usually what happens is... We put people either on like, or do those duties switch out? Because I'm trying to see during the day there was a schedule that I took. A you can out. switch people out as you like. Oh, okay. um, he's a bookkeeper, so basically, like, he pushes papers, looks at files. He's probably good with Excel. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Okay, because there's like a job section of the day too. Um, do we know how long he's, his term is? How long he's serving? According to the record, he's in for a three to five. Okay. So it's just like... Possibly a parole after one year. That's it? Oh, for okay. low-level drug dealing? It's spray. Well, no, because I think low-level, like for heroin and stuff, if you have under a certain amount of grams... You just have to serve two years in jail and a big fine. He's also a middle class white guy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> that is also a thing. Or yeah, less than a gram, but um, he may have had more than that. Okay. 
I am going to show him to his cell and his cellmates. Ooh. Yes, because I'm assuming they don't all sleep alone. He doesn't get his own private cell. No, That's they, not a uh, thing. <clears throat> they, they definitely do thing. not. You do have a choice between putting him into a two-man or a three-man. The two-mans are basically the way these cells are designed. The three-mans are because prisons are overcrowded now, and you just pack them in. Since he seems fairly docile, I'll put him in a three-man. Ooh, white privilege. Excellent. With all right. people. Yep. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Um, and no struggle with that. Is he the inmates that are in the cell? Does he interact with them at all, or nope. just place his things? He is. He's basically like meh nah about it. Nah. Okay. Like he he's basically. Mm. I mean, you've seen prisoners like this. You know, they've they've given up. <laughs> they they know they've been caught. They're not gonna escape. This is their life. Yeah. And so it's not super unusual. Uh, it's unusual because of his age and like what his job is. Like this just doesn't fit and the profile. Had, yeah. But you know he doesn't look especially scared or nervous, which sometimes happens with like either younger inmates or people who come from backgrounds that don't seem like they would be used to incarceration. Okay. Is but, there a time where it's just him and me walking through? Like is or is there not unless you instruct it. There's always going to be a guard oh, because okay. they won't leave you alone with a prisoner. Yeah. Um, so unless Perfect. you instruct them to do so, there would not be ever a time where it's just the two of you. That would be sketchy. That would be sketchy. sketchy. Um, oh, there um, is the usual body cavity search stuff and all that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, does off. that all go like normal? Yeah. Is there... He's got a shim in his butt. <laughs> He's got a shim. Perfect. Ask him where the spray that, comes that from. I know. <laughs> Ask him. Ask him. Like, so uh, this doesn't seem like something you would be in here for as far as like... What do you possession. Mean? <laughs> you seem fairly docile. What was what was up with the the whole possession thing? Works tough. Works tough. Sometimes you need a little help. I see. And you don't have any family or anything that you care about, or are you looking forward to getting out soon? Your sentence not that is not that long. You're for good behavior. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on having good behavior? <laughs> seems like a weird Sure. Way. Okay. <laughs> you laugh at him all the time. You get the sense that he's kind of like having this feeling like, oh, look, I got that weird prison with the nice lady cop who wants to be like our friend. And oh. Like, oh, I'm not your warden. I'm your buddy. I'm here to help you out. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get the sense that he's kind of Hashtag, like, yeah, sure, sure. Perfect. There's that, wow. that, like, nice face of Chicago cops thing. Hashtag Warden of the North. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to put him in his cell, and then I think I'm going to um, send an email, actually. To the um the woman that brought him in, Clark, Clark, and uh, say Patricia that I really ad admire her work as far as I saw the arrest, and that I was more interested in what she does, and would like to be for coffee sometime as a female cop. Oh, huh. yeah. Hmm. Can you be specific about the email again? Oh, okay. Um, that I saw that a inmate had come in that she had arrested but looked more in her and she seemed like an interesting person and i hadn't heard of her in town before so we should have coffee sometime you get an email back within 20 minutes Perfect. uh <clears throat> she goes she says oh i really appreciate that uh i'm not sure of whom you're speaking once i make an arrest they end up in the system yeah. i'd be more than happy to meet up perhaps Tuesday morning, 9.30 a.m. Um, so early. That's perfect, though. Second precinct office. office. It's, it's super like professional. Somebody. It comes back you on, like, the, the inside the system. She's library. got a little, like, stamp that she puts at the bottom of every email. Ooh, the signature. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically the official police department email system. So. Monster. Perfect. Everything's got that little thing at the bottom. Like, the views of this uh, do not necessarily reflect the police department. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, so you set that up. Right. Everything seems pretty routine, and your day pretty much ends without uh, much affair. So, um, oh, we missed one thing because I want to wrap up Sunday so that we can start off with the whole Monday thing. So you you mm. sleep through the night pretty calmly. So you have your whole Sunday. So what do you do on Sunday? Do you want to work or do you? Oh yeah, I work. Okay, I said that. Okay, so in that case, you just have a regular like normal shift. So mm-hmm. yeah, let's wrap it with the end of Sunday. You you have a meeting with him. Uh oh wait, which nope. one of these two? You no. have a meeting with him. That's yeah. right. All right, you're gonna you're gonna come to work on Monday to discover what happened in your prison. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm living a normal life. Yeah, you've got your normal life. So <laughs> my life's normal. Out. Not for long. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Miles are just these stuff to let you live your normal <laughs> life and you spend the whole rest of the Maybe. game just sitting there being like <laughs> the whole guy with accent. The yeah. whole yeah. session. Yeah. We're role playing the whole game. We're role playing like this you know, I can't, horror. I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs> and Will's just at home. He's getting coffee enjoying his time. Doing with his oh my God. No, this is the classic like role playing thing. It's like, how come no one in the game ever goes to pee or goes to restaurants or like has dinner? Yeah. He'll be the guy who does all the mundane <laughs> things. So it's like, what are you doing? Well, I think I'm going to take in a show today. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna go out on the streets looking for like <laughs> colors. Kyle, Kyle, the fishmen! They're gonna eat my insides! I'm gonna go see a movie today. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Taco Tuesdays, I make tacos for my husband. We we rent a film. Yeah. It's always some some noir film for friends. What, the weather's nice, you go to the farmer's market. Yeah. yeah. They're just like Cthulhu <laughs> monsters like all out of your field of vision as you're like going throughout I the mean, day. I like, mean, my life's going to be my perfectly fine until somebody fucks it up. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> How much for these oranges? <laughs> <laughs> Four dollars? <laughs> That's obscene. I know, the whole city's taking over. It's like... <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> eventually, Chicago. <laughs> eventually, your normal life becomes the Cthulhu mythos. Whoa. Oh, your he husband a becomes a cultist, but you don't. It would be another thing that I don't know about. <laughs>